Raider Nation, what's going on? It's Mitchell Renz here, back with some information. We're going to talk about Devontae Adams, the injury, and the severity of it. I literally just got an update from a source to tell y'all that everyone take a deep breath. It's going to be okay. If you don't already know Devontae Adams, he had to leave practice early today. We'll talk about that injury. We're also going to go through a bunch of the training camp notes, which sounds like the defense freaking dominated today. A lot of interceptions. We'll talk about all the players that had some picks and some of the dudes that ended up just standing out in general. Then we'll go into more injury news in terms of the players that ended up missing practice today against the 49ers. And at the very, very end, the Raiders signed a running back, if you don't know. And I got some kind of cool information on Tyree Wilson. So first off, the news that happened today, I'm walking my dog Chuck, and literally two hours ago I was talking about how the Raiders signed Damian Williams. So him and I were out for a walk, and as you guys can see, it was a very effective walk. Um, but Devontae Adams is injured, right? So I get the update. Chug sends me something. I got all my chat sports team sending me a bunch of updates. Like, hey, Devontae Adams took a freaking lick at practice. He ended up walking off the field gingerly. He limped off the field. It was a right leg. But anytime you get Devontae Adams injury, I don't know about y'all, my heart freaking stops, okay? It does. I mean, it's just the way that it is. Max Crosby is the face of the defense. Devontae Adams is the face of the offense. That's what it is. We can talk about Jim Garoppolo all we want. Devontae Adams is the face of that offense. So I am here to tell you that it's a calf injury, okay? It's a calf injury that he was being looked at. The trainers, they put a sleeve on him. And I literally just got a text message about five minutes ago that said, hey, don't worry, it's nothing major. Now, the Raiders are probably going to take it easy with Adams over the course of the next week or two because I think it probably scared the hell out of them as well. But from what I am being told, the Devontae Adams injury is minor and that Raider Nation can take a big, deep old breath because it's going to be okay. If you want that type of news in your life, because if you're like me, it's Friday, that shit would have ruined my entire weekend if Adams would have been hurt. But hey, I got you guys covered here. Hit that subscribe button, turn on those notifications, and make sure you join Jeremy Chugs and I on Sunday for our watch party. Raiders, Niners, got tons and tons of giveaways. It's going to be a hell of a time, and we're going to take down the 49ers report, and we need the entire nation there. All right, let's talk about the defense, because... Shit, it sounds like this defense is legit. And I get excited because I know last offseason, which the expectations for last offseason were up here, and the Raiders' expectations for a lot of people were probably here. I think it's starting to climb up there a little bit because of the swagger that this defense has. And when the Raiders signed Marcus Peters this offseason, one of the things that I said that this team is desperately needed, and I feel like I use the word all the time in all my videos around Peters, was swagger confidence because think about whatever you do in life if you don't have confidence in what you're doing it's probably not going to be that good right i mean heck the other day i'm helping alex build together this thing for her work and i am a terrible handyman my dad built everything my entire life so i'm trying to build this together i don't have a lot of confidence in it guess what it didn't out that great but my point is this according to reports today now you guys know i'm, I'm not a good handyman right according to reports today the raiders had not one not two, not three, not four, not five, but six interceptions against the 49ers. This is a 49ers team that a lot of people thought probably Super Bowl contenders. According to Vegas, they are a top three team in terms of Super Bowl odds. Yeah, their quarterback plays a little bit shaky with Brock Purdy, Sam Darnold, and Trey Lance. But according to reports, Brock Purdy threw three interceptions today. Marcus Epps had one, and Robert freaking Spillane, man, I feel like that guy's just going to give me a big old bird one of these days because every time I bring him up, I'm like, dude's not that good in coverage. He had two interceptions today. <laughs> Throw those 41s down in the comments for Robert Spillane because he is really showing that, hey, he's a hell of a linebacker here. So far, still a lot to be able to go out there and prove. But if the Raiders are getting that type of production from Spillane and even Epps, who's more of a box safety, sky's the limit for this defense. So my question to everyone out there before I talk about some more, we'll say, players that stood out today at practice, what's your confidence level in this Raiders defense? Like, be legit with me. I know the offseason hype's there, and I'm a big part of like, hey, man, until I see it on Sundays, it's going to be hard for me to be like, ah, we got a great defense. 
But be real with me. On a scale of 1 to 10, what is your confidence level in this Raiders defense right now? All right, let's keep talking about this Raiders defense because for me, my confidence level in them is a six and a half, and I'm hoping to be able to get up to their to that seven region. I, this team has a lot better depth than they did last season. They might not have some of the star power, and I'm going to use air quotes because the Raiders defense this year is better. Patrick Graham's system, people understand it, and I'm so happy that Graham simplified it, which has been multiple reports of, Gus Bradley's defense in 2021 is one of the most simple defenses you can learn in the NFL. Then you go to Patrick Graham's defense, which is a lot more complicated. Graham now has simplified it, so now he's got some of these younger players. Instead of just thinking all the time, they're going out there, they're being athletes, and they're reacting. And the results have been very good at training camp and very, very good at joint practice against the Niners. So other people who had interceptions today, Masterson. Luke Masterson, the UDFA from Wake Forest last year, made this roster, had a pretty solid year, over 50 tackles, really had to fill in, and could be an interesting depth spot slash special teams player for this organization, but he had an interception today. Duke Shelley, he had himself an interception today, which it was with the twos, but if Duke Shelley is working with our twos and he's like the backup guys that we have behind Ja'Cory and Bennett, behind Marcus Peters, behind Nate Hobbs, that is another very good pat on the back for Ziegler, for Patrick Graham to be able to build this defense. But in total, six interceptions today. That sounds pretty damn good to me, right? Yeah, I, I definitely think so. Some other players who went out there and had themselves a pretty solid day, Nesta Jade Silvera. I had a person reach out to me today, and they're like, the best defensive tackle today, I'm not saying on the roster, was Jade Silvera, which I find interesting because they put him so far back on the depth chart. I want to see what he looks like in the actual preseason game against the Niners, but my eyes are glued to him. Yesterday, the report was that he might be pound for pound, the strongest defensive tackle on this team, and he was bullying people. If I hear a rookie in the seventh round bullying people, like those are the type of players where Max Crosby was a steal. I'm not saying you're going to find another Max Crosby. You're not going to find another best defensive tackle in the national or defensive end in the National Football League. However, if you can find a Nate Hobbs that can prove to be a very reliable corner, if you can find another Hunter Renfro that you drafted in the sixth round to prove to be a very sl solid slot receiver, and if Nesta Jade can turn out to be a solid defensive tackle in the seventh round, that's where your defense goes from being that fringe 20th to, uh, all right, now we're in the top 15. Oh, shit, we might even be able to force our way into the top 10. Another player who had a solid practice today is Zamir White, and I, anytime I hear that White has a good practice, he had a rushing touchdown, looks very motivated, he's running mean every single snap, good vision, which is what I was hoping that I would hear because I know that Zamir can run angry. There's a lot of running backs in the National Football League that can run angry. They're great athletes. You're not in the NFL unless you're a great athlete. But the way that Jacobs is really sets the tone from him being like an above average back to one of the best in the league is his vision is uncanny. And that's where I was kind of hoping Zamir was able to take that next step. And it sounds like the offensive line had a solid day today also against the 49ers. Let's talk about Jimmy G. Another crisp practice from him. He was popping off all over the football field. He was hitting different receivers here and there. He hit DeAndre Carter for a touchdown today, which... I was excited to see that Carter is getting more and more involved in the offense. We know that he's going to be a part of the punt returns. We know that he's going to be a part of the kick returners being listed as the number one guy for both of those roles. And special teams is how he's really going to help out this overall offense, or I guess team. But to see him get a touchdown today from Jimmy G, that's a thumbs up from me. Some injury news that I want to go through today in terms of players that did not practice. We'll start with the defensive side of the football Chandler Jones, not out there today. Tyree Wilson, obviously not out there today, but we do have an update on him near the end of the show. Darius Harris wasn't out there for the second straight joint practice. David Long Jr. missed another one. Brandon Faison, which not too surprising. On the offensive side of the football, Michael Mayer, Jesper Horstead, Chris Lacey, Hunter Renfro was not there. Britton Brown. Britton Brown better, I don't know what the injury is going on with Brown, but he's got a legit shot to not make this roster. I would have kept Sincere McCormick over Brown over just talent. But now the fact that he's not even out there on the field, McCormick's got the advantage. And now Josh Jacobs, obviously he's not out there. But the Raiders signed Damian Williams today, who not too much to be worried about. That's your Austin Walter slash Brandon Bolden competition, if you will, if you want to try to get a comp to what type of back Damian Williams is. But he does have some Super Bowl experience. He does have that relationship with Champ Kelly. 
who was previously with the Chicago Bears. But those were all the players that did end up missing practice today. If you missed my video on Damian Williams that I put out a few hours ago, please go check it out. That's what the Raiders report here is all about. But the way that I want to end today's show, or maybe we'll do two things, because one thing I think is going to make you all laugh. The Tyree Wilson injury news is yesterday or two days ago when I was on the show, I said he's going to be back in about two weeks. If you don't follow me on Twitter, hit me up on, or whatever you call it now, X, at Mitchell Ren 365 A doctor hit me up, and he posted a video, and he kind of puts really cool information on Tyree Wilson's injury, when he thinks that he's going to be back, and puts a whole medical spin that I'm not even going to try to act like I can do. It's a really cool video. It's on my Twitter. I encourage you guys to go check it out because I think it'll... I think it'll put your mind at ease a little bit around Tyree Wilson's injury and how good he's going to be this upcoming season. And then the final thing that we'll talk about today is I get an email. Shout out to Tano Raider. He's the dude, diehard Raider fan, that's got the Raiders Report logo tattooed on his arm. Hits me up today and he goes, hey man, I'm out in Vegas. I heard Chugs is out there. I want Chugs to sign my arm and I'm going to get it tattooed on me. So I can't wait to see what this tattoo looks like. Chugs, from what I understand, signed Tano's arm, and Tano's going to go get that thing tattooed on him. If that's not what the Raiders report's all about, if that's not what Raider Nation's all about, man, I have no idea then, right? That's really cool, Tano. Shout out to you, man, for being a real one. All right, so I know the reason why all y'all clicked on the video was to get the quick recap here of the Devontae Adams injury. So from the last time I've checked, I'll try to see real quick if there's any more updates, which doesn't look like there's any more updates. Um, from what it sounds like is Josh McDaniels hasn't gotten a full report on Devontae Adams' injury, but the understanding is that it's not too serious. That's a report from Vincent Bonsignor, which then again kind of hits perfectly with what my source just told me at the beginning of the show about 15, 20 minutes ago. Hopefully everyone enjoys the rest of their Friday. Take a deep breath. Sounds like Adams is going to be okay. I don't anticipate he's going to be practicing much. If he is, hey, he's a dog. He's a real one. But I know I would take it easy with him because I want him to be healthy. Week one when we take down the Denver Broncos. All right, y'all. Peace out. Enjoy the rest of your day. If you're looking for more Raiders videos, click this subscribe button right here. And then if you want even more Raiders content videos for free every single day, guess what? There's a bunch of videos that you can click on right over here. If you're planning on joining us for Raiders 49ers this upcoming weekend, shout out to you. If you can't wait until then and you need even more videos, well, hey, I dropped some videos over here as well. If you're a diehard Raider fan, let's show you why the Raiders Sport is the number one most watched Raiders YouTube channel in the world.